Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to discuss today. There's big news across numerous fields, but perhaps the best of the bunch is right here where we start at spaceweathernews.com. We've been watching the sunspots, coronal holes, and plasma filaments reach for that solar maximum state. Took another huge step today. You may have seen it erupting just behind the limb, a solid pop out to the left. Despite it being behind the limb, it managed to register on the X-ray flux anyway, a C-class event, and the eruption sent out a solid CME seen on all satellites, and having a fairly good bit of speed to it as well. While it's heading 90 degrees away from our planet, it is a direct shot at Mars. Mars orbiting satellites and the landers should see the effects of this event and maybe have some issues as well. Top shake of the day struck Iran overnight, not too far from one of their nuclear facilities. A few injuries and damage reports to nearby homes. You've heard about that super typhoon near the Philippines. I've actually been watching this develop for about four days, and at no point has it shown a willingness to charge the Philippines. In fact, models suggest it's going to get cold feet and leave her at the altar as it heads out to look for other fish in the sea. How about a bit of eye candy here to transition into the science news? Abel 2813, lot of lensing arcs visible around and through the supercluster. They've got a new super-Earth clocked about 36 light-years away. They say it's on a super-fast orbit of only a few days around its red dwarf star. They're guessing it's about three times the mass of Earth. Got more names for the list of those wanting to spray the sky, saying it's most effective in spring, and if I may play on their title, a more effective way to manage the world is to just not spray the sky at all. More of a who's doing the planet wrong than anything else here. Heading back to volcanoes to cap off yesterday's coverage of their climate forcing, here they're describing the cooling of equatorial blasts as being mostly about sunlight reflection, while the high latitude eruptions do the same thing, but through more of an effect on the North Atlantic oscillation. Now folks, up next we're heading to the electric geology experiments in the Yelverton lab. We've seen Billy recreate the terrain of Mars, the Moon, Earth, and even some asteroids using electricity and vibration. It's that second one of most importance today is the long-standing concept of climatological eons of geographic working must step aside for tectonic processes. Here, they're studying the rivers, and there's no qualification to the discovery. We've seen this sort of molding in nearly all of Billy's vibration experiments meant to simulate the great earthquake or the crust stuttering to a stop atop a mantle from which it's been unlocked. If Michael Steinbacher were alive today, he'd be smiling from ear to ear right now. Now last but not least, we head over to the number one climate journal on Earth. They've jumped on board with pretty much everything else in observer climate science this year, so why not solar spectral irradiance? Now true enough, we do fault that method as lacking the magnetic field coupling and particle forcing of space weather, but when they use peanuts to satisfy an elephant, I won't sit here and tell you it's not impressive. Again, that's the number one climate journal, using a fraction of the sun's tentacles and showing its dominance anyway. Learn about the rest of those tentacles with Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. What is space weather? How does it affect the weather, climate, earthquakes, technology, and human health? And what is its role in the catastrophe? Get it at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.